All right, welcome to another episode of My Corner of the Universe. Today we spoke with Clifton Schooley. He is an alternative builder doing some pretty epic stuff. He's located in the British Columbia area, but has projects all over the world, all over North America. Um, you guys are going to love this episode. This is our second alternative building episode. Um, if you guys remember, quite a while ago we interviewed... Uh, Morgan from Geoships, which was also another really cool alternative building method, but totally different. You know, Geoships totally are like, different. Yeah, <laughs> the Geoships like you knew a, a geo, geodescent dome. You know, it's yeah. like they're very distinct, and they are what they are. They're really cool, but what um, Clifton's doing is like building these. Like, oh, I'm mean, also like luxury homes. You know, like just beautiful luxury style homes. I mean, you could do a regular single family home, but just beautiful homes with this rammed earth technology. Um, love to hear how he does it he kind of goes through all the different aspects of of building i was totally geeking out during it yeah you know what's cool too is like it's an alternative building technique that has been around for probably a thousand years or something crazy mm -hmm. and so yeah. it's it's a new old type of building which is is you know we kind of maybe got away from it because of you know modern uh technology and, and different materials that we've come up with and and a lot of it comes down to you know in north america we have an abundance of trees as well but it is, uh, it's an old technique that can, they've got some new twists on to make it really beautiful. You have to check out his website, ramdearth.info, because the pictures uh, are just so beautiful of the different kinds of architecture they do. Yeah, I, I got to imagine I should have asked him this. It's got to be derived from like original Adobe style kind of of housing, but don't mistake thinking that these homes look like you're just traditional. Okay. So like, I even, I even really like the design of like the Arizona, New Mexico, Santa Fe yeah, totally. kind of style houses. They look really cool. Um, but this is so much more than that, you know, like it's not just like all those houses have the exact same aesthetics, exact same look as cool as they are. But what he's doing with his rammed earth homes is like beyond way beyond that. It, yeah. And, uh, you know, it's one of those ones where, um, if you've never heard of rammed earth before and you're like, listen to this, you're like, gosh, what is this? Why would I do it? Well, there's a lot of different advantages, whether it is uh, a way to become, you know, a little bit more uh, eco-friendly in the sense that your heating and cooling bills can be greatly reduced. The materials that you use aren't toxic. They're just from the earth. And when you build one of these structures, it can last the test of time, like a traditional stick framed house, you know, might have maybe if it's a really well built one maybe you know a couple hundred years maybe yeah maybe but this yeah. thing you know you can last you know maybe 500 years if if you you know build it right so it's it's pretty amazing and um one of the cool things that he said is he does you know workshops locally where you know where they're at in bc but they also he says he he's doing like consulting um via the web so if you're let's say you're in a different country you're like yeah i'm not gonna be able to make it to bc anytime soon there's still an opportunity for to learn how to do this from afar so i think that's mm -hmm. awesome that he's doing that because it's such a cool technique yeah and you know we're in this unique time right now we just went through this or still going through unfortunately this crazy covid ness and it's taken them the ability for a lot of people to kind of reevaluate their life their careers and maybe you're are a builder and you're like like a traditional builder, you know, a framer. And, you know, we kind of got into this in the episode. It's like, you want to distinguish yourself from the market because no one's doing rammed earth and you could be the only one in your town. So it's definitely worth listening to this podcast and just see if that piques your interest. And if it does, then definitely reach out to Clifton, see whatever you can do to make it up for workshops, apprenticeship. I mean, you know, shoot, he's doing so much. Who knows? You make it up there. You might even be able to work with them for a while, learn the skill and then, you know, start doing your own thing. Yeah, really cool episode, and uh, it's one where, uh, you know, for me, I've, I've just always had an interest in the area, so, um, you know, like Vaden said, we kind of geeked out a little bit talking to him, but it was a real pleasure talking to Clifton, and I know that you'll enjoy the episode. All right, welcome back to another episode of My Corner of the Universe. Today, we have the pleasure of speaking to Clifton Schooley from Rammed Earth, and he is an alternative builder. Welcome to the show, Clifton. Hi, good to be here. Awesome. So I have been into alternative building uh, on and off for, you know, a couple of years now. You know, I 
maybe 10, 15 years ago, I learned about Earth ships and I was like intrigued by just some type of alternative building out there. And over the years, you know, I've kind of just from time to time watched some videos on YouTube or other podcasts, whatever it may be. And I came across you and I got to say for an alternative building technique, yours is, I'd say, um, not only one of the most intriguing, but one of the most beautiful finished products. Can you tell us a little bit about what rammed earth is and how you got into it? I'd be happy to do that. So I kind of had a similar path to you where I started to look for alternate, you know, I got turned on by looking at cob houses, earth ships, this kind of stuff. And then I started to just uh, research the whole gamut of the alternative building universe, let's just say, right? Okay. And I would kind of evaluate the pros and cons of all different types of building mediums, you know, and and evaluate them for what I felt I needed to do in the future because um, my ambition has always been to be a developer and make affordable housing for people out of alternative building materials. And so I came to Rammed Earth as, for me, the superior building method for the main reasons that it's structural, it's strong, it's beautiful, and it's also something that can easily be accepted by the mainstream. Once they're educated about it, they'll realize like, oh, this behaves very similar to concrete in its strength. Um, it is sophisticated looking and all, all kinds of things like that. So this was about 14 years ago. And Were you uh, doing you know, traditional building before that at all? or I had done some. I had dabbled. I was never really, um, you know, I had done some framing and I was mostly doing finishing carpentry, but I had done other projects. I'd been working with my brothers in construction off and on. And uh, I just felt that this was the right medium for me. Awesome. And uh, speaking speaking of medium, to, to get back to your question there, so really so people understand what this building material is. It's not just some kind of dirt like mud. What you're really looking at, traditional rammed earth made properly and for structural building, and the modern rammed earth, they both are predominantly made of sand and stone. So you have gravel, which is similar to concrete aggregate. It has different sizes in it. You have sand in there, and then you'll have the the particular, uh, let's call it the more earthy component, is your uh, clay and your silt. So a traditional mixture has about 30% clay in it, and the rest is sand, stone, and silt. And a modern rammed earth wall, like the ones we make, has more of a, a lower clay content to minimize so there's no cracking in it, typically it. 10 to 15% clay. And then the rest is stone and sand. And there's just a little bit of silt in there. Silt is more like a powd powdery stone, let's just say. Okay, and then so you have, and the last component is cement. We use cement in there. Oh, uh, people okay. think it's evil, but it's not as evil as, <laughs> as uh, people think. If you make a 500 year building, my building, is actually far less harmful than most other people's buildings that that are you know have to be rebuilt several times. Yeah. So, so the, why do people think that cement is evil? I haven't heard of a. Well, a lot of alternative types they're on a rampage about CO2, you know, because they've had oh, that program. Right, right, they've right. They've had, had that mantra programmed into their heads now. Right, of course. Right, by somebody with different different agendas, and I'm not saying that uh, CO2 is benign, but also what a lot of people don't realize, concrete and any concrete type material actually absorbs CO2 after right. it's curing and it will do it for many, many years. And it's debatable of like how much it absorbs, but I feel that energy use is justified when you make a high quality product that's durable and isn't going to be replaced anytime soon. Totally, I'm, I'm on board with you there 100%. Yeah, and cool. it, so you, you learned about rammed earth did at that point you're like, hey, I want to build a house or I'm going to build a structure? What did that look like? Your your kind of your first experiment, if you will. Well, it started before before that. So a friend and myself, after doing all the research and just feeling like, okay, rammed earth is right. This is what we got to do. So I had already in my mind decided, okay, I'm building with rammed earth no matter what, and I'm gonna start building houses for people and just go that route. And I went to somebody who was already doing it and I started learning from them. So I started working awesome. for them, gained as much knowledge as possible, and then went out on my own and uh, got clients and just started building. And then, so it was, my first experience was building a house. 
and then I did houses and then I branched off into, you know, landscaping features and artistic stuff, but predominantly it's housing. Okay. Uh, like a long history, like what, what's the genesis of, of rammed earth? So apparently, you know, the story is it's a 5,000 year old technique. It started somewhere in, uh, in uh, Asia and it's been just done for, you know, many different parts of the world have a lot of rammed earth structures in them. In one area of France, there's 250,000 rammed earth buildings. Whoa. And so it's just spread all over the world, wherever the skill was. And then obviously the material, the material is quite available in most places, but not in all places. And it really is a knowledge based type of craft, let's say. So right. where the people had the need and the material was right there and they had the skills, then they just started building out of these homes because it's just pra super practical for them. And over time, it's faded away with the modern, uh, let's just call it modern uh, factory, factory cookie cutter type. Style. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of cookie cutter housing, right? You come to North America where trees are quite abundant. Um, and, you know, it's just for those industries it made a lot of sense for them just to push their product and it requires skill to do masonry housing, right? Which is what rammed earth is. So uh, the ma mass cookie cutter just beat out over the rammed earth and then the, the skill just faded away basically. Got it. Yeah. That makes sense. Are the, are the materials uh, something that you can easily source? You, know, you talked about a little bit of silt, you know, the everything that you use to make the rammed earth or, or are you, is it harder to source those materials for building? I've been able to find them in most, well, every place that we've wanted to do rammed earth, we've been able to do it. There are some locations in the world that are more volcanic and we need to use volcanic stone and uh, blend that together with sand. And maybe we have to take the clay separately and add it into the mixture and, and make a formulation. But when it comes to particularly Canada and the US, it's uh, the material is quite abundant because it's made from glaciers. So what glaciers ground beneath them, glacial till is what it's called, is ground stone and sand with clay distributed in it. And it's pretty much the perfect material a lot of times, but it does need to be run through a crusher or a screen. Cool. I have a question too. So we go, you know, my wife's family's from the Azores Islands in Portugal, and they have a lot of these old traditional houses that were built by people stacking rocks up, you know, years and years ago. And then yep. what they've done since is they've just slapped concrete, you know, on each side of it. But what you get is you get these thick 12, 16 inch walls. Are the rammed earth walls about that thickness or do you, are they actually thinner? Typically, we do uh, 24 inch walls, oh, wow. so two foot Whoa. and for those on the metric system, 60 centimeter walls. And is that interior walls too or those exterior? Interior, we do sometimes two foot walls, um, but most of the time we just do a one foot wall. They're typically wow. partitions between rooms, but a lot of, um, I advocate to do the perimeter of the house in rammed earth with a two foot wall and then possibly either some columns in the house or a few partition walls inside and then use another type of material to do the, you know, the closets and maybe some other partitions between rooms. And is everything just built on like a concrete slab? Well, typically we'll just build right off the footing. We don't yeah. typically do slab on grade. So we'll do a spread footing below grade, build the walls, and then we'll pack the floor up with sand and other material. So, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, so the, it's floor, like, the floor would be like kind of basically the same technology of the rammed earth flooring as well too. The same typically, material. Typically people like to go with the concrete floor inside their house for the main reason that they uh, typically like to put radiant heat in. Mm -hmm. Although you don't have to have that. You could have a wood floor if you wanted to. You could have an earthen floor if that was your, you know, whatever tickles your fancy, you know, you mm -hmm. could have the same type of floor you would have in any type of house. It's really up to the person. So talk to us a little bit about the the process. So from what I've been able to tell, you, you get your mixture and then you have you you put up some actual framing walls to uh, to to the design of the house or the specs of the house. And at that point, you're filling those with this earthen material. And then uh, how are you compacting it? Tell us a little bit of how, how it all works, how it goes together. OK, so typically. We use a high quality formwork. We use okay. uh, forming plywood that's super smooth. We're using a wood forming system. 
very rarely do we put any kind of steel through the wall, any kind of form ties. So we're trying to leave it as a big empty cavity. So when we build the wall, we have a super high quality finish. There's no little divots or little pieces of steel that have gone through it. And um, we'll do chamfers on the walls and just give it a very high quality, you know, the better you make your form work, the better the quality of your wall will come out. So that's yeah, the forming that. aspect of it. And the, the wall is primarily composed, as I mentioned in the mix before, sand, stone, you've got your clay, you've got your cement, you've got your color in there to taste. And in the center of the wall, we've got insulation. There's a few different types of insulation you can use if you want to go like super pure, then you can go to a rock wall, which is essentially almost like a natural fiberglass made of stone, comes from stone. Right. Out of, mm. It's mined in Grand Forks, BC, by the way one of the main areas and then uh, so there's different types of insulation you can use in there we typically have vertical steel coming up from the footing and then we'll put horizontal steel in as we go so that really is the es essence of what the wall is composed of and so there is as, a rebar in the in the wall as well? yeah the steel yeah yeah we typically use rebar in there and especially on the west coast right it's a seismic area yeah and so i was gonna ask building, the earthquake yeah, and these buildings are engineered, so they're not just kind of like, uh, you know, do whatever you want and uh, yeah. deal with the consequences later. It's taken a little more seriously. They're typically permitted, the buildings that we do. Okay, awesome. I was wondering, been, has, that that been, has that been tough dealing with the first couple times you did it, dealing with a local building inspector when they trying to inspect and permit a rammed earth wall? Because nope. I imagine they probably have no idea what to check for, right? Well, generally, uh, the building inspector, when I started, was fairly knowledgeable. Oh, and it's true, though, a lot of them don't really know the material because no one's build, built a house in their town before. But I found them be, to be quite easy to get with. And really, it comes down. See, if you're going to try pushing it without an engineer, then you're going to have a tougher time with the building inspector. Because mm -hmm. ultimately, what it comes down to is liability. And they're concerned about... Well, they don't understand this material. There's no uh, lab certification that says exactly what the material is and that someone else will take a liability for it. So what they want ultimately is the engineer to take the liability and then they just have to check the regular things in the house to make sure you're doing what you're supposed to do. So um, yeah, so code wise, it's not been a problem, but it, it, the main reason for that is that we get an engineer to stamp and basically take the liability for the whole structure. Very and cool. and you mentioned color, so people actually will will put color. I've noticed on rammedearth.info that the the colors are are really beautiful. It almost has a um, a southwestern type of feel, like adobe or something along those lines. Yeah, kind of sandstone pastel right, type yeah. colors. So what we're using, we're using iron oxides, typical concrete pigments. A lot of them are natural, actually. People don't realize they're putting okra in there and there's different types of minerals, iron oxide, this kind of thing. So we'll mix that in to taste. Typically, before we build a house, we'll do a sampling program. We'll test for strength. And then after that, we test for color. So we're trying a whole bulb different uh, percentages of color in there showing the client the palette and then they pick it and then we go ahead and do it and that's what you see on the website we're a little bit more adventuresome with color than some um, right. not like su super crazy I mean, right, right. but we just try to blend them together in a way that looks natural and is not too bold and when you're doing when you're actually filling that wall it looks like you're doing it in uh, somewhat small increments do, does each increment need to cure before you put the next one on top of it no, you can do a full process of building. Oh, so wow. really, That's if you right. had form work that was like, you know, three stories, you know, it could be, you could have 30 feet of wall, you could build it in one day if you had the manpower and the equipment to, to do that. Oh, wow. So um, I'll, I'll run back to just the process of building the wall. So the, the lift sizes that you're looking at, they're typically, when you ram by hand, you have a smaller lift height. So when you put material in there, you know, you might only put five or six inches of material compacted down to four inches plus or minus. And so then you get proper compaction. When you start using machinery, and we use what's called a pneumatic tamper, and it has a piston and a housing. It's connected to an air compressor, and it'll ram typically eight to one, 800 to 1,000 times per minute. So it'll strike the material with quite a good amount of force, 
And when you're doing that, you can make the lift height bigger. So you could put in, say, eight, nine inches of material, and then it'll compact you down to, say, six inches of material, oh, wow. depending on the density of the material that you're using. But uh, that's the lift. So the process is we mix our material up, typically with the bobcat. We're mixing it around on the pad, spraying water on it. We're getting the material to a damp consistency. It's not a liquid. It's, it's equivalent of a dry pack concrete, which is when you're, you've activated the cement inside of your mix and it's sticky enough. So when you compact it, it's going to compact really hard. Mm -hmm. And once you've put one layer inside the, inside of the formwork, you compact it down, it's compacted hard. And then you put the next layer in and you just keep repeating the process till you get to the top of the wall. I was just curious, how high can you, like, do you pour like uh, a foot and let that dry and then another foot? Like how high do you go on each pour? So typical, a lift height, is around uh, eight inches. That's okay. kind of plus or minus, sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less when you're working with the pneumatic tampers. So we just compact that one and then just immediately throw the material in for the next one and just keep compacting and go, go, go. Typically, uh, let's say the walls most of the time are eight to 10 feet tall and mm -hmm. we complete them in one day. And But we do them in sections. We don't do the whole house, right? If you wanted to do your whole house at one time it takes a huge huge amount of farm work which is a very big expense so we typically are doing wall sections that are anywhere from six feet to 11 feet long let's say yeah when i look at the website the, in the gallery you have like pictures which is, i'm guessing kind of what you're talking about it almost looks like if for the listeners what you'd almost like imagine like a like an old like an old ruins, like a cathedral ruins, but obviously Stonehenge. You see, you see, yeah, Stonehenge. Kind of, you see these pillars, and I'm guessing that's kind of the first process, correct? Yeah, you build all the tall walls first, and then we call that the Stonehenge phase because you don't have any infills underneath your windows. You just have these big tall wall sections with space in between them, right? Where there's going to be a window or a door, and then after we do the the rammed earth, where there's going to be a window. And when people see a bunch put... of those. When on people, and when I'm looking at the gallery, when people put like a siding on there, that's strictly for aesthetics, like on the outside. Like I see people that'll have like, you know, the bottom half will be the rammed earth look and then the top they'll do like a siding or something like that. Like a, you know, either a shiplap or whatever type of siding that's just for looks. Yeah, that's, there's two purposes for that usually. So you've done your rammed earth walls on the bottom level. Let's just say you had uh, a vaulted ceiling in your living room, right? So your south side might be tall, taller than your north side. And so you need to fill in that space around the top of the walls. So typically people will frame it in, then they put in like a cedar shingles or, mm -hmm. or sh shiplap or whatever they're into. And that mostly just comes down to cost. It's a lot cheaper to do it that way than it is to ram the rammed earth up on an angle, make, make, make each wall section at different heights. Yeah. So that's sense. predominantly what's driving people's decision on that. So it's a matter of money. You can do it. The taller you go, but the more complicated you make it, it just takes more time and money. We're in Northern California and fire country. And so I got to imagine that these are a lot more uh, impervious to wildfire than your typical stick home. Is that Absolutely. what you guys experience? So Do people in fire areas turn to this as an alternative type of building? Yes. And I've designed houses for people for that main reason. Right. It's not a it's not a big request, but definitely some people are really concerned about it, depending on where they're living. And the one thing they have to keep in mind, too, is that if your fascia is made of wood, let's say you use siding on there and your whole roof is made of wood, you, you definitely want to consider that as well. So you might want to use a different material or you might want to make sure that you, you have over top of the wood to minimize the exposure but right. definitely the walls anything blows up against your wall there's not like no fire is going to hurt that wall right it's it sparks against it or different embers that are blowing around they won't harm it you just want to make sure that you had aluminum windows on the exterior are you able to run your electrical inside the walls or is that like an exterior conduit that you put in there we always put them inside the walls so we'll yeah. have a thick a uh, heavy duty plastic uh, conduit inside the wall. And then we just fish the wire through later. So okay. the electrical box is embedded in the wall w during the formwork process, we ram it in, then we remove the screws and it's embedded in the wall. And typically they run to the top of the wall. So then you would run your electrical up inside the top of the wall to wherever your 
electrical panel is. Got it. Yeah, that's awesome. Man. As far as uh, cost goes, what is the cost compared to a, a traditional build? This is the fun question. There's a few answers. There's <laughs> well, a few answers. Let me let this. me preface that real quick too, because I know where we're at. You know, obviously lumber is expensive, and you know, with the housing's in demand, because we had a big fire, the campfire, kind of close to where we're at, which took out a whole town of Paradise. And I heard people that were rebuilding up there, anywhere from four hundred to five hundred dollars a square foot, and that's not oh, yeah. crazy. That's not crazy custom. You know, that's pretty standard, decent yeah. house of how expensive traditional building has gotten nowadays, at least where we're at. Yeah, well, that's a good question. Because of the rise in lumber now, I'm guessing that we're under the cost of a wood a wood framed house. But let's say before this whole kind of rise in lumber, we were within five to 10%. But what I will say first and foremost, the number one thing that affects the house cost of any type of house is the design of the house. Right. So meaning that if you're not designing the house, to cost effectively build it, then you're just going to waste tens of thousands of dollars or more. And so with that said, let's just say two houses being more or less equal. Let's say we had a custom wood framed house and a very similar designed rammed earth house. We would typically be within five to 10%. That's the way I build it, right? Some other people charge a lot more money or again, it's depending on, uh, there's other factors, which is what time of year you're building. And these, uh, how to say, these variables are still the same when you're building with wood. People just don't calculate them. They don't realize, oh, I just wasted $10,000 in labor because I was building the wrong time of year. Mm -hmm. Then the weather got bad and my materials were all getting wet. We're out in the sun and there's all kinds of things can happen that can throw your schedule off as well. So with that said, so, now, when you talk about the ultimate cost of rammed earth, it's actually cheaper, cheaper than a comparable wood frame home, even if the costs were exactly the same, because the upfront cost of building, because you have energy savings and you also have uh, superior maintenance on a rammed earth home. You don't need to repaint, you have the durability factor, then you actually have a cheaper home. And on the interior, the rammed earth walls, when you pull those forms off, I mean, that's a finished wall, correct? Yeah, that's right. There's only one process that'll happen. So after the walls are dried, to, it's going to depend on, you know, what's the humidity, what's the temperature, how much sun mm. is on the wall, all that kind of stuff. But more or less, they're dried, which is typically a few weeks. Most of the wall will be dry. And we put a, a clear sealer on it. There's non-toxic sealers you can use like sodium silicate. There's other uh, concrete sealers that are fairly environmentally friendly that you can use on there as well. So it's really just a clear matte coat and it will just stop any particles from dusting off the wall. Oh, nice. And it's oh, got to be a whole lot cheaper than paying someone to hang drywall, mud tape texture, and then paint, you know, yeah, a, traditional, a traditional, you know, stick house. Yeah, so house. it's almost like, you know, for several hundred dollars, you coat, you coat your house. That's the equivalent of your clear coat paint. Uh, it's super cheap. You're not going to need to do it again. And... Uh, then that's it compared to, you know, getting a paint job for a house. I don't know how much it costs nowadays, 10, 15, 20,000. It depends, mm -hmm. right? Obviously, the also, size of the house and the quality. Yeah. I think that um, the the energy cost savings would be significant. Is there a, a big difference in how uh, better that this one will either retain heat or retain cool air inside, depending on the season? You definitely have that. The, the most important thing is you're not bleeding energy out of your house. Right. Right. So that's going to depend a lot on the design, how many windows are inside of your house, et cetera. Do you have, um, does your design have more uh, thermal bridging in it or less thermal bridging? This is all design stuff, but, um, you know, apples to apples to apples comparison you're going to have superior performance out of your rammed earth house because it's just going to retain the heat better in the winter and in the end in the summer even if you were using air conditioning then it's going to you're going to use less energy cooling that space because the walls are going to act as an energy battery it's going to yeah, store the cold or they store thick. the heat yeah and so and so the way you kind of been mentioned about it clifton is there seems to be rammed earth because you're located bc you know british columbia area um mm -hmm. but there's rammed earth builders across north america across how like how how 
far spread do you find you know rammed earth contractors and builders well they're they're spread far and wide you'll find in canada the majority are concentrated on the west coast and america i think you've got a little bit more in the west coast and then down into arizona right arizona new mexico wherever mm -hmm. it's like wherever the skill is and wherever people have come to know know the material so it kind of builds off of that right but there is rammed earth across canada and traditionally and america too i mean there's stuff that was built 100 years ago across the continent but as far as builders go they're just kind of scattered there's not too many right now but it's growing yeah i mean the opportunity is pretty awesome i mean i think of like the construction projects that I've done where you open something up and there's just all kinds of rot on a 70 year old house or, you know, different things. And you don't have any of that with rammed earth. Exactly. And what I'm finding too, when people come to me, they want a house design, they're thinking about even the next generation, they want to build a high quality house. So then their kids can have the house after it's a little bit of a different mentality than yeah, totally, people just yeah. thinking of a temporary cardboard house. Yeah. <laughs> like so, I do call, Glad. They're made of wood. They're not technically cardboard. Yeah, no, I, we're in my you. mind, they're like a cardboard house. They're yeah. like yeah. refugee housing. You temporarily <laughs> use them, and then they're disposable. Yeah, I, uh, well, we live in a disposable world these days, so to be able to make something that can last you know, 500 years or something is, is pretty amazing. You don't see that kind of building anymore. Yeah, it's very rewarding. But you're, I, I'm finding that a lot more people are open to that now because so many people are just tired of the, the boring... Um, typical housing that's built that doesn't have any soul that doesn't really they don't have any emotional connection to so they're looking for something deeper and also starting to think about the next generation right they're like okay if I make something I want to leave my kids something and they don't want to leave them a garbage house yeah have you traveled uh, any long distance to build like in you know in the different parts of Canada to you know Pacific Northwest to, and brought your crew have you done any of that or you kind of keep it local your building yeah no no i've built in different parts of the world and uh you know i've been to the emirates i've been to asia um you know so i've gotten around a, f a few places and i just recently sent my business partner to uh, central america um, he's going to be heading to turkey and so we're doing we're doing projects in different places and i have calls far and wide right like the philippines and and different different uh country so definitely the demands picking up and a lot of these places don't really have professional builders to do this so that's one of the reasons that people are calling far and wide mm -hmm. how does it compare and I, I i don't know if this is kind of a rhetorical question but i'm thinking of like places like latin america or probably a lot of places in the world where they build with traditional cinder block rebar concrete construction if you were trying to you know if you were sitting there and someone's sitting down there like hey i'm thinking about building this traditional cinder block you know home and a stucco finish versus rammed earth why would i choose rammed earth well i would just say first and foremost beauty yeah you know it comes down to attraction and ultimately that's what people make a lot of decisions about it's like what are you attracted to does that feel right for you so that's the first thing and then it talk, then money is actually a pretty important part of the equation the challenge when people are trying to compare a um, a concrete block house to rammed earth is that it definitely will be more expensive on the rammed earth front when you right. compare the cheapest cheapest building material uh you're not going to beat it and there's yeah. a reason that in developing countries that's the building material because it's just super cheap to build with yeah that makes, sense. makes sense right so yeah, it comes it down to a person has to want it they have to like the aesthetics of it or the energy aspect or the durability etc but from the the comparables of cost you're just gonna the rammed earth the modern rammed earth won't win if you want to do crappy rammed earth and just take a bunch mm -hmm. of stuff out of the ground and just ram it quick and cheap and dirty yeah well then it's a viable alternative but if you want to make high quality work using the right formwork, using the right processes and making something that's durable, then it'll cost you a little more. It kind of rem what you just said kind of reminds me of uh, earth bags. Are you familiar with that type of building? Yep. Yep. I've covered them all. I've researched them all. I've got the books, the whole thing. Yeah. I mean, so, it seems like a much cruder form of what you're doing, more or less. 
Well, what we're doing is quite sophisticated compared to earth bags. Right. Don't right. get me wrong. People can make a beautiful earth bag home. It can be quite artistic and, and nice and whatnot, but they're really just taking a loose dirt, which could be a very poor quality soil or a sandy, powdery, silty, and they're just filling it in bags, typically coiling it around and then connecting them together. And then they're using either a mesh or a plaster over top of it. So it's quite a different technique. Right. It just they have different properties. It's not something you're going to want as a structural building material. Yeah. So yeah. I'm trying to trying to picture what you're talking about. The that basically they're just stacking up your walls with bags. Yeah. Yes. And they don't less sandbags, but they right. fill them up with like a, a dirt uh, clay mixture. Maybe I like I'm not. Uh, it could be know, almost anything. You could fill them up with sand, stone, all these different kinds of things. And then There'll they'll usually ones. like cob over that. Once the bags are in place, they'll cob over it. Yeah. Like yeah, um, or lime plaster. Yeah, like there's that straw house on the way where we're yeah, at. Kind of like a the house. Coast. There's, a, there's a coffee shop that they built. It's like a straw. They took hay bales, basically, and stacked them up, and then same same concept, right? Yeah, but, so they're yeah. Very, these type of mediums are very different. Typically, uh, that, that type of structure doesn't need a post and beam to kind of hold its roof up. Typically, they're, they're building them more in a dome or cone mm -hmm. type of shape. Um, when you're looking at straw bale or cob, typically it's uh, those wall systems are an infill wall system. They're typically relying on the, a post and beam, typically made of wood, to be able to carry the roof load on top. There are there are exceptions, but more or less that's typically how it's done. So when you're looking at rammed earth properly built, as professionals do and traditionally, it's a super duper strong wall system. When we build one column of rammed earth, it's two feet by two feet. That's strong enough to hold your entire roof. Uh, yeah, I could see that for sure. Like yeah. typically, like on a small structure, right? Because it can hold it can hold one one column two feet by two feet thick can hold a double decker bus if it's built properly. That's how strong it is. Wow, <laughs> double decker. So it's crazy. you yeah. know you don't need to need it to be that strong, but when you're making it properly, that's how that's how strong it is. Just to give a comparable, you can't do that with those other building mediums, right? Do you do so, uh, any kind of um, like? Um, teaching you know i imagine that there there could potentially be people listening to this that are like gosh i would love to learn this building technique i mean have you ever thought of putting together like master classes where people can uh you know i don't know if this is something that you can actually learn over the internet but i would think that there's probably a demand for you know a master teacher like yourself apprenticeship there, program. there is we teach workshops every year that was and, the word uh, I was looking for, workshops, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah, we have some underway right now. So my business partner, Max, he's teaching classes right now in Prince George, B.C. And there's going to be, there's, uh, we've just got advertised two more coming up, which is the, the next one's on the 23rd of August. Then we've got the 6th of September. They run for five and a half days, and it's just full on working with the crew, learning all about it, and actually doing it. Kind of like how so, you started. Exactly. That that's yeah. how it is. And that's actually my preferred method. I've done a little bit more classroom. We're always do hands on building, but now what we're doing this year is more apprenticeship style, just with a few people per class instead of doing a big class. And there's advantages to it is that you really wire all of the processes into your body, right? You're forming multiple times, you're ramming a whole bunch of times, you're doing all the processes, so you really will remember it. And you yeah. really just yeah it's just like real action and doing it so when you go to do it yourself it's going to be totally locked in that's great and, so and if people are listening and they want to potentially do something it's rammedearth.info correct that's right yeah you can okay. just go into the blog section and there's a workshops page but it also just shows up right away on the blog right now it's the first post in there yeah, okay, I think it's a great opportunity if you're uh, into building or a contractor and you're looking to diversify yourself on the market. You know, I bet you if you searched rammed earth your city and you don't find any results, then you're like, hey, I'm, I would be the only one in this, you know, this whole area. And to learn that skill and being able to do that would be pretty awesome. It would take some take some workshops, it takes some apprenticeship, but um, talk about setting yourself apart in the marketplace.
Well, interesting you mentioned that because today we just had somebody sign up and that's exactly what he was doing. He's done construction before, he's working on his uh, family farm right now, but he's thinking like, oh, I want to go build these houses for other people. So he signed up for the workshop and, you know, it's, yeah, I get a fair amount of people who are interested on that level. And uh, I've got a couple that I'm working with to help them set up their own businesses and work with them in a consulting capacity or training capacity when they get up and running. So that's something we, we do. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Hey, we really want to thank you for your time, Clifton. I can't tell you enough, you know, uh, for me always finding new great alternative ways to building, I think is an amazing thing. And your, your website is awesome. If, if you're listening to this and you want to see, you know, what rammed earth is all about, I highly recommend going to rammed earth.info and checking out how beautiful these buildings are. They are really something special. Thanks, man. And could I add one more, one more uh, shameless plug in there? I've oh yeah, by website. all means, yeah. I've got a new website called Green Dynasty Architect. Okay. GreenDynastyArchitect.com, and that's showing a little bit more of the fancy architectural aspect of Rammed Earth. And the ramdearth.info, we do show building designs on there. We have lots of building designs, houses we've built, all kinds of projects we've done. It's more of a grassroots type website, which is just educating people, showing them all kinds of aspects of how we build. And so they're just, each website has a different vibe. So I just wanted to put that out there for people to check them both out. Okay, we'll put that in the show notes as well. Oh, cool. Awesome. Thanks, well, man. you've been a pleasure, Clifton. And, you know, I know uh, it's already Tuesday where you're at, but uh, we just want to, again, thank, thank you for sharing your little corner of the universe with us. And, uh, you know, maybe someday uh, if we're in Bali, we'll look you up. Look forward to it. It's been a pleasure, guys. Right awesome. on. Thank, Thank you so much. Night. You're welcome. Take care. All right. Ciao for Have now. Have a good night. Bye-bye.